Anyone who's got a CNC machine will know they're a great asset to the shop, whether it's a DIY or commercial board machine. You know, really come in handy if you, when you just want to cut out those awkward shapes or complicated shapes. But sometimes you're just making a part and you just want to cut something out simple, like a circle, or maybe you just want a rectangle, keyway, uh, or bore a hole, something like that. Usually what you'd have to do then is draw something in CAD that represented the shape you wanted, uh, create the, the CAM profiles and the G-code and all your cutting parameters and so on, then export the G-code out, bring it into machine, and then run that program. So if you're in the middle of making something relatively simple, you don't really want to go to all that hassle. That could even take longer than just making the part itself. Now, yeah, if you're familiar with G-code, you could actually just program them into Notepad, just the raw G-code commands. But when they get more complicated, when you've got offsets and things like that, maybe you could easily make a mistake in your head. What you could ideally want is something in between, something that you could just type some simple numbers into and it creates some G-code. Uh, ideally what you want is some kind of easy way to do that. Well this part here where I just wanted to do a counterbore, what you'd really want is some simple program that could just give you that straight away. Now Mac 3 did have something built into that, something called Wizards, where you could just type in some diameters, depths and things like that and it would create you some G-code pretty quickly and you could run that. But I don't run Mac 3 anymore. Uh, I switched over to UC CNC quite some time ago and never looked back really. Um, I don't think I'd really ever want to go back to Mac 3, although it did have those wizards. So I basically want to recreate something like that and just make life a little bit simpler in the shop. Okay, we've moved over into the workshop now and as you can see we've got the CNC machine set up ready to go and we've got the computer on and we've got Excel running. So when you first fire up Excel it looks like this, so you can put all your equations and things in there. But if you want to go and look behind the scenes and uh, look at the Visual Basic, you need to go into the Visual Basic Editor which is Alt and F11. And then you'll see behind the scenes here, let's just move that out a little bit. So this is the overall project and in here we've got a number of objects. So we've got the three worksheets, so we're just looking at worksheet one there. So if there's any code associated with those, that's where that would appear. We've got something called this workbook, which is the overall workbook. And in there you can do things like when the workbook opens and closes, uh, you can make it do things. So when it opens, it will run this form, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So speaking of forms, we've got the forms section just here. And under this, if you do insert, um, this is what I did. I inserted a form module, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, we won't go on to the modules and class modules in here. We'll just focus on the form. So on the form itself, I create this one called mini G-code. If I it open, it looks like that. And uh, I'll just put the uh, tool, toolbox on. Okay. So this is all user created. So these are little uh, either text boxes or you know, little input boxes. You've got buttons that do things. And you can just move these around on this grid that you can see in the background. Also on here, I've created a number of tabs. So we've got a circle one, I've got a pocket one. This one doesn't work, but it's something I'm just thinking about doing. And then a keyway one, I haven't got to that yet, so I'm just experimenting with the circle one. So let's just put that back up on again. Let's put it over here so it doesn't move it. Um, so basically what you do is you place these wherever you want them, and then what I've been doing is, so say for that one there, um, there's a load of parameters that it associates with that, so it's all the formatting, so how you want it aligned and things like that. The main one you really need to focus on is just the name of it, and I've called it tool diameter. So if we click on another one that's circle diameter there, that's called circle diameter. So these are all the parameters behind each of these boxes. Uh, and I changed these names to something I could remember because the code needs to refer to this and then it can refer to each of these values underneath here. So when the user types something in, it will read it through the value uh, associated with that circle diameter box. And it goes on like that. Uh, some of the other ones like this one is actually a, a command button and that runs a piece of G code. So that's got a title, generate G code circle. We'll show you what that does in a minute. And then the other one that's a command is browse one down here. I've just called that my browse folder. That uh, browses to a file system structure that you're familiar with in Windows. Um, and then that's where you can put your file. So I think that's kind of the overview. Oh yeah, and then the G code will appear up here. This is just um, a list box. So it's a particular type of window called a list box. And this is where the G code will appear, right. So if we then, uh, let's just see if we've got it in. No, I haven't, okay. So in that mini G code, we'll just look at the code, and that's here, so we'll just tile those. 
So this is the form itself. So if we add to it, yeah, let's go through this very briefly. So when, when it initializes, so when Excel first runs, I've got a little bit of code um, hidden within this workbook that runs this user form. And this is the initialization. And these are all the default parameters, like uh, the diameter there will appear in this box here. All the different offsets and all those kinds of things. I've even started to put some defaults for the pocket tab, but I haven't used that yet. Uh, so those values all go into there. Um, and that's just initializing the forms. So that's what it comes up with. There's even some defaults in terms of where it stores all that data. And then when you click on the G code button over here, it runs a bit of code, which is this code here, generate G code circle. So when you click on it, it runs this. So it defines a load of parameters or variables. Uh, then there's another load of parameters there, which is to do with actually reading those values in the first place. Then there's some calculations about you know, tool offsets and things like that. There's a few error checks, just to make sure you're not going to do something silly. I won't catch everything, but there's the basic ones there. And then there's this big loop that does the G-code creation. So it creates a text file with all the G-codes in, and that goes all the way down to, to here. And then at the end, um, it lists that out. So this little command here puts all that, that G-code array. Um, this actually creates the G-code and stores it, uh, stores what's ever in this array uh, into the this list so you can actually see it on the screen and then there's a bit of code down here that actually does the saving to a file which is a little bit down here uh, so that's this bit of code here so this actually just creates a system file uh, a file called a text file .txt and then it saves all the, the G code into there so that's what your motion controller can actually use and load and then there's another little routine down here so when you click on browse the folder down there uh, it runs this little bit of code here and this brings up the built-in dialog box uh, which navigates you to um, a directory. So that essentially is a quick overview of the code. So let me show you it in action. Okay, so if we, we clicked on the, the form, we'll just hit run here. This runs automatically when you open the file, um, but I'm just, because I'm behind, behind the scenes, I need to actually run it manually and here we are. I don't know if we can minimize that. Maybe we can, yeah, okay. So this is the form that uh, you get presented with then. So you've got the parameters you can put in, like the tool diameter, um, which is the diameter of the tool you're going to use for cutting, where the top of the hole is. Uh, so normally you navigate to where you want the zero to be, x, y, and then you touch off off the top there for you, z for zero. So those easiest probably is just set those at zero, but you could have an offset from, from, from a particular datum. Um, then you've got the start offset. That is so when the tool comes down, and this diagram's a bit misleading. It's actually the edge of the tool that comes to that circle there, because that's the outside that's going to cut on. That S said there is the start point, so that's 0.1 millimeters to make sure um, you don't come all the way down, just touch the surface, so it starts there, and then it will start to spiral in. Uh, this is your circle diameter, it's good, so it's going to cut an inside circle, so you're just boring out a hole or a pocket or something. Well, not a full pocket, because it will leave material in the middle, but you're boring just around the inside of that hole. So that's 10 millimeters in this case, and it'll go down to three. Uh, you've got the option to have a radial stop to leave, so it'll rough out just up to this point here, and it will leave, in this case, 0.1 millimeters radial stop to leave, and then it will spiral down there. Uh, then, because that would cut undersize, because you've got the stop to leave on the edge, um, we've got this, um, where is it, yeah, the checkbox here. If you tick that, then it will also do a full depth finish pass so once it's gone all the way around for this roughing cut, it will move out to the outside just in a straight line. It's a little bit crude and simple. Uh, so it moves to the outside, then it will do that finish pass there. Uh, then the other ones are about the plunge rate. So this is how quickly it comes down before it starts to cut. And then when you're actually in the cut, we've got a feed rate there, 200. Step down is each revolution of this spiral. How far do you want to step down? I've got that as one millimeter and then the spindle speed. Now I automatically start mine on the control panel, but I've put, made it put it in the code as well, just in case I ever have automatic starting and it will set the speed correctly. Uh, the only other things are, before you generate your G-code, it's worth just browsing to where you want to go, and I, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. So go to the desktop, OK, and I'm just going to call it mini G-code. OK, well, let's have a go at writing some code out. So we've got our tool diameter of 6, we've got our hole centres there, our offset, we've got the circle diameter, that's on the inside, so we're going to cut 10mm hole basically, 3mm deep, we've got radial stock to leave, and we're going to do a full finish pass at the end, clean that up, 
I've got all the parameters set there, so let's just navigate to the desktop. Just make sure I definitely did that. Okay, yeah, that's correct. We'll call it mini G code. And we're going to keep overwriting that. Um, I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, then when we go, we'll go to generate G code then. So that appears here. So what we've got here is a few, the ones in brackets are just comments. So it says circle, it tells you the tool diameter that you were using and what diameter the circle is and the depth. There's a few comments about what it's then actually doing. So it will switch the spindle on. Now I do that manually, um, but if in the future I have that automatic off a relay or something, then I've got that command in there. I could optionally add a checkbox as well to start the coolant or mist, but I don't have that yet set up, so I haven't done that. Uh, then it moves to the start of the cut. So that's moving outboard and at Z.1, so it will come down to just to the start of where it's going to cut the first spiral. And then it's got a series of loops called G2, so these are cutting arcs. So it will cut around in an arc and it will go a radius of 1.9 and then down to Z0. So it will start at point 0.1 and it will radius all the way down or spiral all the way down to 0. Then it goes to minus 1, 2, 3. So it's basically going to helix all the way down to the bottom. Now the last helix will have a slight ramp on it. So just to clean that up, it does that last complete circle again. So there's two sets of threes. And then because I've roughed it, um, it's now going to do a finish pass. So it will go out to yeah, it goes out to the final radius, which is two, at a very slow speed rate, um, because it's cutting a lot of material just in one go like that, and then it will just do one final spiral at the complete uh, correct radius, which is two in this case, to cut all the way around. So that's a diameter four, and because the tool's six, you'll get a circle of ten. And then it'll go up to Z zero, so it will retract the tool out, and it'll switch off the spindle if if it was on via an M three command and then M30 is rewind the code. Now there's a couple of little checks that we'll do, such as, so we've got a tool down to a six, so if we go, let's say we try to cut something at four, obviously that won't fit in, so if we generate G-code, it won't generate it and it'll say, sorry that doesn't fit, so there's that little check, let's put that back to, let's put that to 10. Um, so what's the other one? Uh, yeah, so circle depth is currently three, but if you step down at let's say four, try and generate, let's say no, that's too deep, it won't let you do that. And um, there was one other, th oh yeah, there's one other that it, thing it will do, uh, so let's put that back to one, which is, so you got tool diameter six, if your circle diameter is say 6.05, now that's okay, well actually that probably won't work because of the stock to leave, let's just check. No, it doesn't fit inside um, because the stock to leave there. So if we put that to zero, take that off because that's not needed. It will generate some G code. As you can see it did update, but it says the tool radius is very small. Just check that you're okay with that so you haven't made a typo. Uh, I mean, technically that is possible. That will spiral down at a very uh, small radius um, and uh, it will actually do it, but it's just warning you. So I think they're the basic errors. So that's a quick overview. So let's just put that back to 10. Put that to point one, which is our rail stop to leave, finish pass, and yep, generate code. There we go. Okay, let's get UCC and C loaded as well. Uh, so we just created that file, and we said it's just a load file. It was on the desktop, and it was mini G code. And you can see it in here, and if we go to ISO, you can see it's good to full screen toolpath. You can see what it's done there. So it's generated our helix, so it'll move out to this point here, spiral all the way down, and then do a complete run at, at the bottom. And then because we did that off uh, the finish pass as well, once it's done the final uh, cut around, it will move out to the final radius. You know, nothing fancy here, nothing blended, so you will get a slight witness mark there, but you know, it's a quick program. And then it'll do the finish pass. In fact, uh, we can just skip down it like this. So there's our first helix. Second one, these are all these G2 commands. And then it will move out to the finish pass, do the finish cut, and then come up and finish. Yeah, okay, now that's all fine, but one of the nice ways about doing it like this is, uh, is let's say, oh, I didn't want to do that. Um, I, want, I want to cut it, I don't know, 10 deep. If you just hit generate code again, it overwrites the that file mini G code. So if we go into here uh, and then just put reload over here, 
Now if we do an ISO view, now you'll see, especially if we go out here, you've immediately got all those. Uh, and you so you can do all sorts of things like maybe you want to actually I want to just creep up on it and do 10.01 and generate that G code. The numbers all change in here. If we go back into here, you probably won't see it in here, but just reload the G code that would now be ever so slightly larger in diameter. So you can interactively play around with your parameters here. You just hit generate, you go into here, reload, and you're instantly ready to go away and remachine that part. While I was making this video, I had a little look around to see what was already available because, you know, I'm sure someone's thought of this before and turns out they have. So it's also not only referred to as a wizard, but sometimes referred to as conversational programming. And there's a couple of uh, options out there that you can buy. So the first one I think I found was uh, IntuWiz. It looked like it had a one-off payment of about $70. And then for the first 12 months, you got free upgrades over any maintenance and so on. Then after that, yeah, that, that was it. That was your lot. Um, yeah, reason why it looked pretty feature loaded, so it looked pretty good. Uh, the second option I found was G Wizard, uh, which is the conversational programming. Um, that looked a lot more pricey, but again, very very feature loaded. It was about ninety nine dollars a month, um, but there was some. You know, if you did it over a year, then it was a little bit cheaper. So probably out of the range of a you know, hobbyist, probably. Um, but again, lots and lots of feature on it. Uh, and then I found something I think called Kip Wiz, something like that. Um, I didn't see a price for that, so I don't know. But again, uh, similar kind of idea. So I think what that means is before I go too far, you know, and start adding lots and lots of different options on it and really uh, get into the code, uh, you know, I should consider just how far I want to take it, really. So I think there's a bit of a sweet spot probably between just a few basic functions and basically it costs me nothing. I'm just going to you know, write the code and just a little bit of investment in time. Um, if I really get serious and want to do a lot, then probably look at one of the other options uh, maybe look at the Interwiz, the $70 one, something like that, or just see what's around that's kind of the next step up. Well, I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be pretty handy to be able to just uh, use conversational programming and just cut various interpolated circles, rectangles, keyways, and things like that. So I may develop it a little bit further um, and then keep that for when I need to cut out these sort of shapes. So I'll finish the video off there. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, any comments on this kind of topic in general or any interest, leave your comments down below. Um, see you next time. <laughs>